So hello world, my name is Amelia and this is another video. <laughs> um, it is Thursday the 29th <clears throat> and my voice feels, I don't know what's going on. I, I just been kind of ticklish in my throat, it's weird. Anyways, well I at least <laughs> managed to have a few days go by without me doing another video but uh, I'm really, I'm really going through a lot right now as far as, you know, what is my next step. Um, so I started my CNA class. I had my CNA class yesterday. I mean, yeah, it was the week before, but that was the official class. Um, we had six chapters we had to go through, <laughs> mostly all boring stuff because it was about like job hunting and um, professionalism and things like that which really drove me up the wall because I'm like this is not new stuff to me I mean I'm 34 years old I've dealt with job searches before um I mean yeah it's it's good sometimes to get reminded but in a lot of ways it was just kind of like oh my gosh like I'm so bored but I did my best I got through it <laughs> my butt really hurt when it was all over and um, apparently after we're done with the first two classes, then we have to take our first tests. Like I said, there's five tests in total. Um, and apparently the next unit, which is for next week, um, is on safety. So again, you know, all the basics of healthcare organization, safety, what is OBRA, OBRA, you know, um, some of those things um so educational i definitely found it interesting and i have to say that something that's very interesting that i i like about education and going to college is the fact that i do actually feel like even though even though like education might not specifically be helping with certain things it feels almost like certain facts and figures are almost easier for me to remember even if they weren't directly covered in a class. Um, it's so weird how my brain can <laughs> latch on to certain things and remember it and I would love to unlock that secret further. But anyways, that's a whole discussion we can have more of later. But for now, it's on to the really tough things, which is where am I going here with my job? What about my mental health? Um, so last Sunday, I, I <laughs> sat down with my parents because I was wanting to have a conversation with them about um, just, I, I don't know, it was kind of a general conversation because I feel like I haven't had a whole lot of time, <sighs> a whole lot of time to actually talk to them. So I sat down and I just basically brought them up to date, informed them what's been going on, told them. They got a little, my dad got a little upset with me because they had just come back from Florida and he's like, I'm tired, I want to go home, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I understand. I was like, I guess we could have done this another time, but I was like, I just need somebody to talk to, which is a big thing for me. I, I usually have been able to feel better when I have someone to talk to. Uh, but I did finally tell them about my decision to get into medicine. Um, still a lot of uncertainties, um, for sure. Like, you know, not sure what am I gonna actually go for? Am I gonna go, go after my RN? Or would I like to shoot extra high and go for medical school? I know I brought that up in, that, in one of my previous videos. But the big problem right now is burden. Um, I got two more weeks of college to deal with. I have two essays deal, due this Sunday for English. Um, I don't think I have a whole lot for college 101, 100. So weird how to do that. Do, um, I think just a couple of things I need to finish there. The English one is tough because um, I have to write a whole essay on a certain chapter and it's the final essay, which is kind of annoying considering it's also due at the same time as another essay. And I'm like, why? Um, and then the other one I'm doing, I got to finish it. And it, I could probably do it in a few hours, but it's just a matter of me focusing, 
focus. I'm, I'm like, so like, don't want to do anything. Um, so that's a thing. The other thing, um, is, you know, is the CNA class. Like I had to put in like two dozen different time off requests at my work. So I'd be able to do my labs and do my classes and do all sorts of stuff. And that's going to also give me a really funky schedule too. Um, I had talked to my supervisor about the problems I'm having and I tried to hope that there was some room to work with. I also reached out to Sedwick, our leaves and accommodations department a few days ago, and they're in the process of working things out. Um, they're also, they're getting a hold of my psychologists. Um, there are a few accommodations I asked for, which I know I've went over those. Still waiting to hear back. And then supposedly, I'm also told by Sedwick, is that they sent an email to my supervisor saying, hey, can you give Amelia some flexibility in the meantime while we work on this? Well, yesterday was very frustrating because I tried my darnest to be on time and I already had changed my start time from one to five so I could do my class yesterday. And I tried rushing. I tried jumping in the car and getting to work. And then that's when it turned out that, well, it was raining and I forgot how stupid people drive in the rain sometimes in here in Missouri. And I get on the highway and it's backed up. I seriously would have made it because you're allowed up to six minutes late without getting penalized. I would have seriously made it. I was one minute late by the time I got through it. I was like, oh, I was so angry. And then that's when, then yesterday evening, I got called into the office to have the sit down talk about how often I've been late. Apparently I had been late five, now six times in the past 30 days. And it was basically a first warning. If it happens again in a 30 day period, um, then I can basically go to a second warning. And if it happens again, that's getting fired. They called me in the office and I sat there and all I did is I just kind of kept my eyes down at <laughs> desk level and just kind of looked down. And there's my supervisor, the person I sat there and literally told about everything going on. And then there's the ASM who should have known he should have also been well known about what's going on and how str frustrated I am with work. And then here I am being reprimanded by both of them. And that just really, that just really made me hurt inside because it, it just made, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not at all trying to shift the blame off of me. Yes, I'm terrible. I shouldn't be late to work. I try, I very, very much try. I try not to be late. But when that happens, I'm just like, <sighs> it happens because I fear going into work. It happens because I get distracted. It happens just because inner turmoil. And I can try, I can probably get it, be extra cautious in the next, from here on out. But it just hurts that I got a warning. And there wasn't even, not even once during the sit down, I would have at least been a little better if at least once during the sit down, they said, hey, look, we understand you're going through a lot right now. You've talked to us, we understand it. If they acknowledged it, and then said, look, and, but we're just doing this because, and I understand because it's, it's company procedure. You hit a certain number, it's time to have your first warning. If they would have, if they would have just sat down and said, look, we understand what is going on. So sorry. I would have walked out of there a little more positive, but 
I ended up going to the back of this back into the outside storage area and crying for 15 minutes because I can't put up with that I feel hurt now I feel hurt by both the ASM and my supervisor and right before that meeting I was trying to be very positive and get my work done and and go above and beyond pulling a big ass pet cabinet out of fulfillment staging just because I wanted to make sure you know I'm trying to be an active I'm trying to be the best person on fulfillment but nope we had to sit down and not even a mention of what I'm going through I had a chance uh, and I just sat there and staring and, and <laughs> halfway through the thing I you know here's here's um the ASM he looks at me he's like we really need your attention to this like you have the most minimal amount of attention that you will get because there is no sympathy going on right now in this room when you know what I'm going through. Again, I'm not trying to shift blame or anything. I realize I'm, I was the problem. I just wish there's some sort of acknowledgement, but it did make me really honestly believe I'm like, this is not my place. I need to get out from that job as soon as possible. And my partner tried to sit there and tell me that, well, you should try to just push through it and because you know there's going to be something better on the end. And yes, she's right. The thing that's really frustrating, though, I like making parables. I can literally compare my job right now to an abusive husband. And there's, there's such thing as, I've always my whole life been in all in or not at all. I do not like half-assing things. I do not like going halfway through. I like to have my full self into something or I don't even want to have anything to do with it. And it's, it's very frustrating to me when I can't be all in and I want to be. You know, and she was kind of like, well, why don't you be all in for right now? I'm like, I can't. I'm trying. And that's causing this to happen. And it's like, but I can't just leave because I need my paycheck. So I compare my job to an abusive husband. I can either be all in to the abuse and trying to just be open and letting it happen and hoping that my abusive husband changes And that's just going to continue to make me stressed out, panicking, anxiety, depression, late, risking these things. Or I can go mediocre and be half-assing it just like everyone else on my fulfillment team. That's just going to stress me out because of my whole all in or not at all. And, but that's also just like sitting there and just sitting and taking the abuse. Just letting yourself get raped. But that's not the answer. The real answer here is get out. When someone's abusing you, get out. Get help and get out as soon as possible. I can't just sit there and take it. If that's either half-assing it or all the way. I gotta get out. But here's the thing. The abusive husband, quote-unquote, is giving me a paycheck. I'm basically being paid to be abused. And I'm addicted to that pay right now because I don't believe, I don't know what I can do without it. I'm getting great insurance. Of course, come to find out that now my therapist from the past year is not covered under my air insurance for some reason. I'm trying to find out what that's all about. Um, neither is my psychologist. I'm basically coming to find out that my health insurance is not as great as I first thought it was. I have a pending, pending, um, I, I made a complaint to HR about a grievance over my benefits. I got a lot of things that are kind of happening in the back that kind of depend on me to keep the job. But who knows if anything will even come of them. It's just a matter of me fighting and fighting and hoping and hoping. I'm gonna go into work today. I'm gonna go for the next while. 
put up with it the best I can. I'm seriously leaning towards letting my supervisor know that I want to start cutting my hours. I'm going to do whatever it takes to just be like, look, cut my hours down. I Give me the minimum that a full-timer can work because I can't keep putting up with this abuse. At the very least, I'll, I'll try to deal with a reduced paycheck over none at all. And then there's the worst case scenario, which is just going on FMLA again. I'm about a, another week or so away from being qualified for FMLA. And if that happens, if I can't seem to make peace with this, I might just go on disability again. Because I, I can't keep subjugating my mental health to this abuse. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. I at least need to hold on to my full-time job for right now because if it comes down to me having to refinance my home or something else, that's gonna be very important. And that's probably one of my biggest uncertainties is my living condition. I don't know, I don't know if this is going to be permanent. This is my home, but I'm going through a divorce that could, which is pretty much already going to result in me um, having to shell out about $3,500 to pay off my ex's share of the equity. And that's just frustrating because I'm going to be $6,000 in the hole. And then there's on top of getting my ex's name off the house, which I'm hoping I can use the assumable option, which my mortgage paperwork from 2016 says I have the assumable option. It's just a matter of my mortgage company working with me. There's a lot of ifs, thens, and buts. And there's going to be the stress of getting into a medical career finding a job, talking to people, advocating for myself. I'm usually a pretty good advocate, but that's just stress in its own. I got covers to do for my company. I am I run Pen Oaks Publishing. I got taxes to do in the next couple weeks. Um, I think next week is our finals. I got to prepare for that with psychology next week. Anyways, I'm going to leave this video here. I'm not going to turn this into another 30 minute. That was at least all I had to say for now. I do have a therapy appointment at one, then I'm supposed to be in at two. And I already messaged my supervisor and said, hey, can you change my start time to 2.30, please? I'm like, because I got an emergency therapy session to help deal with these feelings right now. And I really want to start, I feel like I went a whole year wasting therapy, which was 2015, the army. Wow. That's a long time ago. 2019 to 2020. I feel like I, I was really, well, I probably wouldn't say it like that. I feel like I made good progress in 2019 with therapy, but then I lost my therapist, which that was a whole story in its own. And then when I got my therapist back in February, got a new therapist in February. Yeah. Anyways, um, Hopefully it's not going to be another video tomorrow, but if there is, hopefully I can make that one just a quick update. Anyways, it's nice to be able to talk for a minute and hope everyone's doing great. I will see you all in the future. See y'all later now. Bye now.